So I'm now going to uh, start with the diameter of an ellipse. Diameter of an ellipse. First of all, how do you define a diameter? How do you define a diameter? So diameter is nothing but it's a line which bisects a system of parallel chords. Okay, so let us say I have a system of parallel chords whose slope is M. So let's say this is a system. I mean, system means a set of parallel chords. And these parallel chords, they have a slope of M. Okay. If I start bisecting the midpoints of these, these chords, okay, I obtain a line which we call as the diameter of the ellipse. Okay, so this is called the, the blue line is called the diameter. Now I have drawn the diagram in such a way that it passes to the center of the ellipse, but let's figure it out. Okay, this is just a speculation which I am doing, right? So is there any, uh, you can say, a uh, robust way to show that this diameter will pass through the center of the ellipse. And let us say these are all system of parallel chords whose slope is, let's say the slope of all these chords is M. Okay. First of all, I would like to know the equation of the diameter. One more thing I would like to uh, tell you here is that the point where the diameter meets the ellipse they are called the vertex of the diameter. This is called the vertex of the diameter. Okay. These two are vertex of the diameter P and Q. Let's see. Okay. Now I would request you all to give me the equation of this diameter. Everybody please work this out and tell me what is the equation of the diameter. Use your uh, concept of equation of a chord bisected at a given point. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Charan. Yes. If there is any, any lag or something, I think last class there was a lag in the session. In case anybody is experiencing any kind of a lag, do let me know. It's better. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Aditya. Yes. <clears throat> Find the equation of the midpoint of, so basically this becomes the locus of the midpoints of a system of chords having slope M. So using this, just a hint, using this, get the equation of the diameter and give me a response on the chat box. Okay, let's say, let's say the locus of the midpoints is basically I'm trying to obtain that by assuming, let's say the midpoint of one of these chords as H comma K. Okay. Now, if this chord equation, I ask you, what will be the equation? So what are the equation of the chord whose slope is, sorry, whose uh, midpoint is H comma K? You'll say it's a simple T equal to S1, correct? And let's say this is our standard ellipse x square plus y square, x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to one. So t will be xh by a square, yk by b square minus one. S1 will be h square by a square, k square by b square minus one. Okay, so minus one minus one goes for a toss. So this is the equation of the chord whose midpoint is h comma k. Okay. Now, as per the question, this chord must have a slope of, this chord must have a slope of, slope of how much? 
M as per the given question, right? Correct. And what is the slope of such a line? Slope of such a line is, see, if you write it in the general form, let's say I write it like this. In the general form, slope of any line is what? Let's say this is our lines. What is the slope? Minus A by B, right? Right. So minus A minus A divided by B. Okay. So this is the slope and this itself is the locus, uh, you know, uh, equation. This itself is the equation of the chord. If you generalize it here, if you generalize it here by replacing your H with an X and K with a Y. So you end up getting M is equal to minus X B square by A square Y. In other words, Y is equal to minus B square by A square X by M. This becomes your equation of the diameter. And you can clearly see that it is passing through it is passing through the center of the ellipse. Okay. So please note that even though I am basically taking a case of a standard form of an ellipse, this property that this diameter, any diameter you take, diameter bisecting the midpoints of any system of chords will have to pass through the center of the that ellipse. Okay. So this is true in general. Okay, so in general, you can say it will pass through the center of the ellipse. So note down the equation y is equal to minus b square by a square x by m. So you can clearly see that if m is infinite, that means you are bisecting a system of parallel chords whose slope is, I mean, who, which is parallel to the y axis then your uh, equation of the diameter will be such that it will be y equal to zero. That means your axis, the major axis will become the diameter. Is this fine? Any questions? Any questions, any concerns? So y is equal to minus b square by a square x by m. Now, let us now also talk about conjugate diameters. Let us talk about conjugate diameters. So let me just pull out the, yeah. So what are conjugate diameters? So let us say there is a system of parallel chords. Okay. I'm just taking a system of parallel chords. Not much. And let's say there is a diameter which bisects the midpoint of these chords. Okay. Now, what do I do? I start making chords which are parallel to this diameter. Okay. Let me make just few of them. So what I'm doing, these gray chords that you see, they are parallel to the blue diameter. <clears throat> okay. And if you start connecting the midpoints of these gray diameter, if you start connecting the midpoints of these gray diameter, you will get another chord. Let me make it in pink. Let me make it in pink. Then this blue and this pink, this blue and this pink diameters, they will be called as, let me write it like this. They will be called as conjugate of each other. So they are a set of, or they are a pair of conjugate diameters. Okay. So let me write down the definition of it. Maybe from the definition, you'll get a, uh, a clearer idea. 
So what are conjugate diameters? So definition of conjugate diameter is two diameters. Two diameters are said to be two diameters are said to be conjugate of each other. Each other. When each, when each bisects all chords parallel to the other, okay. Now you can see that <coughs> the uh, pink, the pink chord that you see, that will bisect all the chords which are parallel to the blue one. And blue will bisect all the chords which are parallel to the pink one. So as you can see, the green ones are parallel to the pink one. So these are all, these are all parallel to this guy. And these are all parallel to the blue guy. So I'm showing them a double arrow so that you can understand them. Okay. Now I have a question. If you have understood this definition of conjugate diameters, I have a small question for you all. First note down and in case of any concern related to the definition, do let me know. So two diameters are said to be conjugate of each other when each bisects all chords parallel to the other. Okay. Now let the equations, let the equations of the conjugate diameters, conjugate diameters be y equal to m one x and y equal to m two x. Okay. So let us say the blue chord, the blue chord over here. I'm taking its definite uh, equation as y is equal to m1 x. So m1 is the slope of this uh, diameter and this pink chord, I'm taking its equation as y equal to m2 x. Okay. Now prove that, prove that m1 m2 will be minus b square by a square. Prove that M1 M2 is minus B square by A square. Very simple. Uh, once you're done with this, let me know with a done on the chat box. It's just one line, that one line you have to write and that's it. The proof is done. <laughs> Kinchuk is done. Read the definition once again. Two diameters are said to be conjugates of each other when, when, when each bisects the chords parallel to the other. Clear? Okay. Now see. Let us, let me focus on the blue diameter. Correct. Now the blue diameter is basically bisecting the chord, which are parallel to the pink diameter. Correct. Pink diameter slope is M2. So all these green chords that you see, they have a slope of M2. So as per the equation of the diameter, we have learned that its equation is y is equal to minus b square x by a square m2. Correct? Yes, no? And this, this is representing the slope of the diameter, which as per my question is m1. Correct? So m1 is equal to minus b square by a square m2. So what is m1 m2? What is m1 m2? 
माइनस बी स्क्वायर बाई स्क्वायर डन ओके वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू कैन से प्रॉपर्टी ओके लॉर्ड ऑफ क्वेश्चन हैव बीन फ्रेम्ड इन जेई एडवांस एग्जाम बेस्ड ऑन दिस सो प्लीज नोट दैट the product of the slopes of two conjugate diameters irrespective of however is your basically your uh, you know uh, equation of the ellipse it will always be minus b square by a square it will always be minus b square by a square okay so you can also write this in terms of the eccentricity so eccentricity is what under root of 1 minus b square by a square Correct. So this is going to be e square minus one equal to minus b square by a square. So you can write it as e square minus one also. Okay. Anyways, this result is good enough. Please note this down. Now try to understand if your ellipse was a circle. That means I take a limiting case of an ellipse to become a circle. That means your b square and a square will become equal. Then the two conjugate diameters would actually become perpendicular because slope product will be minus 1 right so only when there is a special case where your ellipse becomes a circle that mean b tends to a then the two conjugate diameters would be perpendicular to each other so in case of a circle the conjugate diameters would be perpendicular but not in case of a general ellipse because b and a are not equal okay and please also understand many people uh, think that Uh, we'll we'll discuss this in some time. Many people think that the uh, endpoints of the conjugate diameters. Okay, uh, we will take this as a property. Let me not speak about it right now. We'll take it as a separate discussion point. Okay, so everything on this page is done. So can we move on to the next page? okay done all right now we look into some properties of conjugate diameters let me check if i have taken a snapshot instead of writing them all okay uh we'll take this property first properties of of conjugate diameters the first property is the eccentric angle this is what i was actually trying to say uh, the eccentric angle of the ends of a pair of conjugate diameters differ by a right angle now let me make a diagram first of all <clears throat> let us say let us say this is my pair of conjugate diameters so i'll mark, i'll make it in blue and pink okay now i've not drawn the chords just for the purpose of keeping the diagram neat so you can say let's say uh, p p dash and q q dash okay so p p dash and q q dash are conjugate pairs they can be several set of conjugate pairs okay so this is one set of conjugate uh, diameters i have taken now what is this particular uh, property trying to say is that if this p has an eccentric angle of let's say phi then this p will have an eccentric angle of pi by 2 plus phi can we prove it prove that if one vertex of the diameter p p dash has an eccentric angle of phi then the vertex of one of the vertex of the conjugate to that diameter will have an eccentric angle of pi by 2 plus phi can we prove it can we prove it let me take theta and this is pi theta also because phi i can use later on so it doesn't matter yeah can we prove it
Please try it out. Not a rocket science. Don't worry. You have already done one of the properties which will help you to do it just a little while ago, not even one minute ago. This is the center of the ellipse. Let me know once you're done. Anybody who's done, just say done on the chat box. Okay, to be more precise, let's say CP has a slope of M1. CQ has a slope of M2. Now use it. At least I gave you as a hint. So the two conjugate diameters have slopes of M1 and M2. Now go ahead. If you do it, you will remember it. Else it will be just another theory and it will be washed off. Aditya is done. Very good. <clears throat> See, what is P? P is, let's say, A cos theta comma B sin theta. Okay. And as of now, let's call this angle to be phi. Let's say I don't know this. Okay. As of now, this information is not known to me and I'll call this eccentric angle to be phi. Correct. So as per this assumption, this should be A cos phi comma B sin phi. Okay. Now a simple concept I can use that slope, slope of CP is M1, which is B sin theta by A cos theta because C is at origin. M2 is similarly B sin phi by B cos phi. Sorry, A cos phi. A cos phi. And you already know that M1, M2 is minus B square by A square. So M1, M2 will be B square sine theta sine phi by A square cos theta cos phi. This is minus B square by A square. Okay. In other words, you get tan theta tan phi is minus 1. Correct. So far, so good. Tan theta tan phi is minus one. Okay. So can I write this as tan theta is negative or you can say tan phi tan phi is negative cot theta. Okay. Negative cot theta, you can write it as tan pi by two plus theta. And from here, we can say one of the possibilities that theta could, uh, phi could be theta pi by 2 plus theta. So that's why one of the vertex of the conjugate diameters will have a centric angle of pi by 2 plus theta. Please make a note of this. Now, guys, let me, let me clarify a confusion which people get. Okay. People tell me, sir, it, it seems to suggest that the two conjugate diameters are perpendicular because the product of the slope, right? Let's say theta and phi are the, uh, you can say angle of inclination of these two diameters. Then the product of their slopes is minus one. That means they should be a 90 degree over here, isn't it? Guys and girls, I would like to reiterate this. This is a blunder that you are making when you are saying that. Theta and phi do not represent this angle and this angle. Please note that. Theta and phi are the angles which are made with the auxiliary circle. So if there was an auxiliary circle over here, let me make a diagram out of it. Maybe I will use a, let's say orange color. See, please, please understand when I say, when I say yeah, this is my auxiliary circle, right? What is an auxiliary circle? A circle, which is basically having the major axis as the diameter. So when you say this point has an eccentric angle theta, that means 
if i connect this center to the auxiliary circle and from there i drop a perpendicular then this angle is theta my dear so tan of theta is the slope of let's say i call this point as uh, m point tan theta is the slope of cm not the slope of cp get this right okay this mistake is done by many people similarly when i say eccentric angle of q is phi means if i connect this to the auxiliary circle from there i drop a perpendicular sorry my line was not that that straight it's difficult to <laughs> yeah so something like this okay this angle is phi get it right just like this angle was theta this angle is phi now and the angle between these two lines this is perpendicular that i agree but the angle between cp and cq that is not perpendicular that is not 90 degree are you getting my point right if that was 90 degree then i would have got m1 m2 as a minus 1 but that is not happening here okay so don't get confused this is the slope of cm and this is the slope of let me call it as m dash here this point is m dash okay so this is the slope of cm dash so don't get confused between this and this they are two different things is it clear any questions that is why it is very important to understand the concept of eccentric angles which many people don't know properly <clears throat> okay so in light of this in light of this if p coordinate is a cos theta comma b sin theta can i say q coordinate will be minus a sin theta comma b cos theta okay so if this is p this is q so what will be p dash and q dash that also please tell me who will tell me what is the coordinate of p dash now guys and girls very important to understand if theta is the eccentric angle of p what will be the eccentric angle of p dash write down on your chat box if theta is the eccentric angle of p what is the eccentric angle of this p dash <laughs> people people are scared to say <laughs> yes pi yes you can say pi plus theta right because if this is theta and this is c please understand this angle is also pi and the change in the eccentric angle will also be pi because if you bring this down okay till it hits the auxiliary circle and then extend it upwards even this difference will be 180 degree only okay so eccentric angle for this will be pi plus theta so your answer will be a cos pi plus theta which is minus a cos theta minus b sin theta okay you can say it is it is going to be diametrically opposite means mirror image about origin so just change the sign of the x and the y coordinates of the p similarly the q dash point this point okay it will be negative of this so it will be a sin theta comma minus b sin theta okay please make a note of this so these are your vertices of the di uh, conjugate diameters so p p dash and q q dash are the two conjugate diameters whose vertices are as stated over here okay note this down so that we can now go to second property <clears throat> now since most of you are here i would like you to give me a suggestion yes i also need your suggestion sometimes 
how do you think such a voluminous topic like conic section can be completed only in class 11th is there any way out for this and you already know in class 11th many students are not willing like you people come on a sunday spend another one and a half hour studying the present 11th i mean they are still not used to this long duration for them three and a half hours is only too much <laughs> so as uh, you know 12th graders in fact as my uh, passing out batch what would be your suggestion related to how do i complete this voluminous topic in 11th any ideas i would be happy to hear any you know good ideas coming from your side <laughs> start from the beginning yeah how do i face it out see by the time i just complete the school level conic section your year is over no february end comes and your first term exam uh, sorry your uh, 11th exam happens <laughs> tell them to then they definitely will uh, do yeah <laughs> they will not definitely not open the chapter also yeah trigonometry is still two two and a half hours mm, but again uh, yeah i have to engage them because i have i have to take 12th batch also 11th batch also right so i don't want to split the three and a half class subject break and conic after that right that's a good suggestion raghav actually that means after every class last half an hour you do conic section yes that's a good suggestion actually mm correct 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 are they are also not done not done with the syllabus no akash chemistry you know how voluminous chemistry is also it is equivalent to three subjects physics physical organic and organ <laughs> yeah gaiti that is also a point well taken because people will start leaving in the last half an hour but anyways those who want to study they will not be at loss yeah सो so, जो पढ़ना चाहते हैं उनको पढ़ने से कोई नहीं रोक सकता जो नहीं पढ़ना चाहते हैं उनको कोई पढ़ा भी नहीं सकता अनफॉर्चुनेट नेक्स्ट प्रॉपर्टी अच्छा डू इट इन द फर्स्ट आर दैट्स आल्सो अ वेरी गुड सजेशन किंशुक थैंक यू वी कान डू एनीथिंग राइट लाइक चलो किंशुक एंड राघव थैंक यू सो मच एंड अदर्स ऑल्सो या टू थ्री टेन मिनट्स ब्रेक correct siddhant we'll do that we'll do that okay now moving on to the one of the uh, next properties of conjugate diameter now read this property it says the sum of the squares of two conjugate semi diameters is a constant and it is equal to sum of the squares of the semi axes of the uh, ellipse in short this is equal to square of the this is also equal to the square of the director circle radius anyways this is very easy to prove please prove it in fact i'll make the diagram once again ayyo okay so this property is very simple it says that they have call it as d so i'll also call it as a d okay so they have said that cp square plus cd square is equal to a square plus b square now this is very simple uh, given that we have already done uh, the end points of or you can say the vertex of the conjugate diameter ends so let's do this this is a cos theta this is okay and this will become minus a sin theta comma b cos theta because the eccentric angles the eccentric angles for these points they differ by pi by 2 eccentric angles differ by pi by 2 again the angle between cp and cd is not pi by 2 okay so now this is very obvious that cp square will become a square cos square theta plus b square sin square theta and cd square will become a square sin square theta plus b square cos square theta when you add them your result is very much in front of you okay 
So this will give you a square. And this will give you a b square. Fine. Any questions? Next property. Can you go on to the next property? Okay, distance from the origin, everybody knows, right? So I don't have to worry too much about telling you distance formula. So CP distance and CD distance I have written and I've just added them up. Property number three, the product of the focal distances of a point on an ellipse is equal to the square of the semi diameter, which is conjugate to the diameter through the point. Okay, read the property once again, the product of the focal distances is equal to square of the semi diameter which is conjugate to the diameter through the point okay maybe when i draw the diagram you will be able to relate to it see this property says if there is a point p okay of course let's say these are your foci s s1 and s2 okay so the product of the focal distances so what are the focal distances focal distances will be s1 p and s2 p okay so s1 p times s2 p this product is basically said to be equal to the conjugate now let's say i draw a diameter passing through p Okay, so one diameter passes through P. That means P is one of the vertex of the one of the vertices of a diameter. And let's say the pink one happens to be the conjugate of it. Okay, so the blue and the pink ones are conjugate of it. Okay, so let me write it like this. This property says this product of the focal distances is equal to CQ square, right? That is the square of the semi diameter, which is conjugate to the diameter through the point. Very easy. Please prove it. I hope everybody knows the focal distance of a point on the ellipse. If no, we can spend half a minute discussing it yes half a minute not more than that it'll, it'll not take more time see let me make a separate diagram this is let's say the directress corresponding to this focus right let's say if i take a point p here which is x1 y1 what is this distance S1 P? Let's say this is your AE comma zero. Okay. Now please note that this distance SP is E times PM. Okay. And this equation is X equal to A by E. So SP will be E times PM. Okay. Now here to here it is X1. And this whole thing is A by E. So it is a by e minus x1. So when you multiply, it becomes a minus e x1. And also note that, let me call it as s1 for the time being. Yeah, also note that if you want to know its distance from the other focus, from the other focus, let's say s2, then s2p will be just a addition of it. Okay, and that's how your other definition of an ellipse comes out that ellipse is locus of a point which moves in such a way 
that the sum of its distances from a fixed point is a constant. That means S1 P plus S2 P is a constant. And this constant is the length of the major axis. So this is another locus definition of an ellipse. I am, I'm, I'm sure I would have told this to you in class 11th when you were doing conic sections. If no, then please note it down. This is very important knowing the focal distances. So yeah, so let's use this to, uh, let's use this to solve this property. Done. Just say are done on the chat box. Done. That three is done. Very good. Okay. So let's take this point to be a cos theta comma b sin theta. Correct. So S1 P as per this notation that I gave you is a minus E X1. X1 is this guy. This is X1, right? And this is Y1. So X1 is a cos theta. Correct. Similarly, S2 P will be a plus E times a cos theta. Okay. Now what do we have to prove? This is equal to CQ square. CQ square. I just now dis discussed with you. It is going to be a square sine square theta plus B square cos square theta. Why is that so? Because as we already discussed the eccentric angle of a and B, uh, P and Q differ by pi by two. So this is minus a sine theta comma B cos theta. Correct. So CQ square will be square of this square of this. Okay. So, which is what I have written over here. Okay. Let's now simplify this and try to show that it comes out to be CQ square. Simple. Let's use our a square minus b square or x square minus y square formula. Okay. So this becomes a square. Now e square, we already know it's, uh, let me write it down. So e square is one minus b square by a square. So a square e square is a square minus b square. So I'll use that over here. Okay. So this a square e square, I'm going to substitute with. Okay. I'm just going to box it up. Yeah. So if you simplify this, it becomes a square one minus cos square theta plus B square cos square theta. That's nothing but a square sine square theta plus B square cos square theta. And that's definitely matching with our CQ expression. Look here, CQ expression is this. So it's definitely matching with CQ square. Okay. So hence this property is true. Now these properties normally uh, they come as a question themselves. Okay. So that is why it is very important to treat these as a question rather than learning them as a separate entity that, okay, this is a property. I should remember it. No, treat this as a question because everything is, I know, getting derived from your prior knowledge. Okay. Let's take last, but not the least property. But before that, any questions you have, do let me know. Mm, that's a very good suggestion. First one hour I will keep for conics. Okay. And extend the class by half an hour more. Maybe people will not be able to leave also. Right. Thank you. Okay. Next property. Starting class. Yeah, that is also a good idea. 345. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. 
three forty five and ending it at the same time and doing the first one hour or forty five minutes with conics. That's a good suggestion. Okay, property number four. Read the property. Very interesting property. It says that the tangents at the extremities of a pair of conjugate diameters form a parallelogram whose area is constant and that is equal to product of the length of the axes. So this area that of the parallelogram is four AB. Few topics of conic can be included in the bridge course also. Now, bridge course, anyways, I think, uh, Shraddha, uh, it was too, too long for you people, right? We didn't spend half the time with their current batch because their board was delayed a lot and it never happened. So, uh, in the bridge course, we hardly get time to complete properly, you know, graphs and calculus. So, bridge course will not be, uh, you know, right time to start conics because they will not be using it also. Conic is just a, you know, math specific topic. Yes, Gathe, 345 would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Definitely not. It was not better in offline. Uh, online, we got more time, right? We could discuss more questions in online. In this case, uh, see, you can do, you can uh, do a small cutting of the corner, then don't try to prove it's a parallelogram because you can easily prove it by knowing, finding the tangent at these points. Okay. So these point coordinates are already well known to us. They, they will be parallelogram. So don't worry about it. So it forms a parallelogram. Let's take it for granted. I'm more interested in getting the area. If you can prove that area is 4AB, that is you know, all I need. Offline batches, we, what do you used to do, uh, Hari Aran? In offline batches, we used to call them in the summer vacations, in the school premises. So summer vacations, uh, Madam Principal would allow us to conduct classes and we would call them on Sunday, uh, on uh, almost every day, especially during the, during the summer break, which used to be very long. And then we used to complete conic sections. Yes, exactly. That used to be the scene with the offline matches. Okay, let's try to first, you know, uh, brainstorm. How do you, how do you find this area? Okay. Now, just in the interest of time, I would like to uh, show you this diagram. See, if you look at this parallelogram, C, D, Q, P, this parallelogram, let me shade it. Okay. Do you realize that the area of the complete parallelogram, let me name it, R, Q, R dash, Q dash. Okay. That will be four times area of area of the smaller parallelogram. That is what I have shaded C D Q P. Okay. Do you all agree with that? As you can see, there are four chambers that they have made just to show you that. Correct. Now area of the shaded parallelogram that is your a yellow shaded parallelogram cpqd or cdqp whatever what will be that first of all okay you'll say base into height okay now base here is cm 
uh, sorry uh, dq okay and height is cm base into height while cm is very easy to find out because you are just finding out the distance of the center from one of the tangents so distance formula of a point from a line can be used but how would you find dq how would you find dq because q position is not known right how would you find dq anybody can suggest me that cm is easy to find okay let let me just write down the equation of tangent tangent through d or at d okay by the way d point i'll just rewrite it let's say this is eccentric angle theta so this is eccentric angle pi plus theta so it will be minus a sin theta comma b cos theta so your equation will be x x 1 by a square y y 1 by b square equal to 1 and x 1 will be minus a sin theta so this will become minus x by a sin theta okay so the distance of origin will be your cm but how will you find dq so aditya is suggesting something q is the intersection of the distance formula uh <laughs> okay can i say dq is cp <laughs> isn't it so dq is actually cp so it is just cp into cm because it's a parallelogram no this also is the parallelogram this also is a parallelogram so dq and cp are equal and cp distance is easy to find out because you know your point p is a cos theta comma b sin theta and this is origin so distance formula isn't it why is dq cp a parallelogram see this is now a very good question uh, vaibhav has why is dqcp a parallelogram isn't this whole thing a parallelogram this whatever i am drawing and this is basically nothing but it will be parallel to this line this will also be parallel to this line same will be pp dash parallel to this line correct and the diagonals they will be equal so this length will be equal to this length this length will be equal to this length this length will be equal to this length correct and they are parallel also correct now here let us try to figure out cp length and cm length individually so cm length is mod of 1 which is actually a 1 need not write mod 1 by under root of sin square theta by a square cos square theta by b square okay in short this becomes ab ab under root of a square cos square theta b square sin square theta correct and what about cp length cp length anyways is under root of a square cos square theta b square sin square theta because distance of p from origin is this now when you multiply cp into cm cp into cm and let me just circle this also so cp into cm if you multiply it what will happen it will become ab under root of a square cos square b square sin square into under root of a square cos square b square sin square so this will get cancel off giving you ab only and please let me remind you that 
AB is just the area of one fourth of this parallelogram. There are four such parallelograms sitting over here. So use this result over here, and you'll end up getting area as four AB. Okay, so this becomes your area of the parallelogram drawn by or formed by the tangents drawn to the vertices of the conjugate diameters. Is it fine? Any questions? So more or less the important part of this particular discussion is over. we will uh, spend few times talking about few minutes talking about uh, coin cyclic points some interesting questions can be framed on that as well so let's move on to our next point of discussion all right coin cyclic points what is basically coin cyclic points the concept is very simple let us say there is a circle and there is an ellipse okay let's say this is an ellipse and let me take a circle okay let us say these two uh, you know geometric figures they intersect let's say they intersect at these four points p q r s okay so the points where the circle and this ellipse intersect okay please remember if they intersect the minimum number of intersection point will be 2 or it will be 4 okay if they intersect okay if they touch then also we can say they are two two coincident points okay so in case a circle intersects an ellipse it will intersect it in two or four real points okay and let us say the eccentric angles of these points are alpha beta gamma delta now let me give this as a question to you only let's not you know uh, give this as a theory prove that prove that the sum of the eccentric angles of the coin cyclic points so let me write them p q r s they are called coin cyclic points so prove that the sum of the eccentric angles of the coin cyclic points is an even multiple of pi is always an even multiple of pi can any can anybody prove this so if a ellipse and a circle meet at four coin cyclic points or maybe even two coin cyclic points prove that the sum of the eccentric angles will always be an even multiple of pi please do not get confused with the conormal points in case of conormal points it used to be odd multiple of pi Yes, yes. Take a very generic case. No issues. Take a very generic case. Okay. Take a generic case where it is a circle centered at origin. Okay. Will they always be diametrically opposite? by the symmetry of the figure it is 
but let's say if I just displace it also slightly here in their displacement, if I do, then also that property should hold valid. Maybe you're talking about a very special case. Uh, Shitaj. I could also displace this circle slightly here. Special case that will always come out. <laughs> okay, so in the interest of time, I know uh, this will be slightly difficult for you. First, let me ask you a simple uh, question here. If I connect alpha and gamma points, Okay, I get a chord of a uh, ellipse, isn't it? So what is the equation of chord PR? I wrote a chord, sorry, yeah, chord PR. What is the equation of the chord PR? Or you can take any of the chords, doesn't make a difference. Uh, let me just, Take a chord like this, uh, chord PQ. Okay, let me take PQ. Doesn't make any difference whichever two chords you take. Okay, and let me take a chord RS. So, what is the equation of the chord PQ? Why I took PQ? Because you would remember alpha beta combination which I gave you the uh, in the equation of a chord x by a cos alpha plus beta, y by b sine alpha plus beta. In fact, x by a cos alpha plus beta by two, y by b sine alpha plus beta by two is cos alpha minus beta by two. Do you all remember this equation of a chord? We had done it before doing the equation of a tangent. Okay. Similarly, what is the equation of chord RS? You'll say simple x by a cos gamma plus delta by two y by b sine gamma plus delta by 2 equal to cos gamma minus delta by 2. Okay. Now, what I claim is the circle is a family member passing through the intersection of equation of this ellipse with the pair of these chords. So first of all, I'll create a pair of chords. Okay, how do you create pair of chords? Very simple, multiply the two equations of the chords. So when you multiply it, it'll look like this. X by A cos alpha plus beta by two, Y by B sine alpha plus beta by two minus cos alpha minus beta by two. If you multiply this with x by a cos same thing gamma plus delta by 2 plus y by b sine gamma plus delta by 2 minus cos gamma minus delta by 2. So this equal to 0 will give you a pair of chords. Pair of chords is basically the chord PQ and RS equation combined. Now what is my claim? Listen to me. Listen to this claim. The claim is this circle that you see this circle that you see is a family member or it's a, it's a curve passing through the meeting point of the ellipse and the pair of chord. Correct. Do you all agree? Because the circle is passing through the endpoints of the two chords as well as the ellipse. Correct. 
in short the equation of a circle the equation of the circle can be written as let's say ellipse equation plus lambda times pair of chord equation equal to 0 in short it is x square by a square y square by b square minus 1 plus lambda times this huge expression okay which uh, let me call this as a p i will not be writing it again sorry okay now i have to choose a lambda i have to choose a lambda in such a way that this equation should represent a circle if this equation should represent a circle in a circle you already know the characteristic of a circle is the coefficient of x square and y square should be equal and the coefficient of x y is zero right so for it to represent a circle please ensure two things coefficient of x square should be equal to coefficient of y square and coefficient of x y must be zero because in a circle there is no x y term so what i'm going to do i'm going to categorically pick up x y term from this equation and put it to be zero by the way this doesn't contain any x y term so all x y term will be in p so if you check your p term your x y term will come when this fellow multiplies with this fellow and when this fellow multiplies with this fellow and the coefficient will come out to be let me just multiply and show you it will be 1 by a square sorry 1 by a b not a square 1 by a b cos alpha plus beta by 2 into sine gamma plus delta by 2 so i am multiplying this fellow with this fellow and now i am going to multiply this fellow with this fellow so that will give me 1 by a b sine alpha plus beta by 2 cos gamma plus delta by 2 okay this should be zero first of all the moment you put a zero you get the answer for your question how see this is just as good as saying cos alpha plus beta by 2 sine gamma plus delta by 2 sine alpha plus beta by 2 cos gamma plus delta by 2 so as per our compound angle formula this is the formula for sine of alpha plus beta by 2 plus gamma plus delta by 2 okay now if sine of some angle is 0 which means that angle should be a multiple of pi so alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta by 2 should be a multiple of pi okay and being some integer which means alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta is equal to 2 n pi okay where n is an integer which clearly proves the fact that the sum of the eccentric angles of the cone cyclic points would be a even multiple of pi that is what we wanted to prove this was our problem statement anyways this is a slightly on a higher side i mean um, maybe this concept is going to be tested only in advance not in j main Coefficient of x square and y square, you have it will come out to be the same. You can you can try it out, Aditya. So Aditya has a very valid point. So uh, does this also ensure that coefficient of x square and y square will be the same? It will come out to be the same. If they are not come out to be, if they are not coming out to be the same, that means the intersection is not happening at all. That means the points that you are talking about they are not coincyclic at all. It will definitely happen, Aditya. Check it out. Okay, so uh, towards the last 20 minutes, we will take some questions. In fact, all the theory part we have already covered. There's nothing much to be covered. Just a small part is covered. Reflection property of an ellipse. Uh, this is for J advanced. So people who are only aspiring for uh, J mains, uh, don't worry too much about it. It's only for J advanced. Okay. So the last few minutes I will spend on uh, reflection property of an ellipse. That is something which is left off. Some questions have also been framed on that. Okay, so let's now move on to reflection property 
reflection property of an ellipse. Okay, all of you, please pay attention to this. A very simple thing I would like you here to prove. Let's say there's a point P. Okay. So this P point, you connect it to the two foci. Okay. S1 and S2 are foci. Okay. I would like you to prove a simple, uh, you can say, theory over here. Prove that the normal at P, this blue line is the normal at P. Bisects this angle. Can you prove this? Prove that the normal at P bisects the angle made by P with the foci. That means the angle between the focal distances. By the way, I mean, if this was extended further, if this was extended further, okay, then the tangent at this point would have bisected the external angles. That means this angle would have been equal to this angle. Okay, anyways, I just want you to prove this part. The normal bisects this angle. So this is equal to this. How would you prove it, first of all? Uh, any, any idea to prove it without going into too much complexity of angles? Any safer way to prove, any easier way to prove, any convenient way to prove? Maybe showing that N will give you some idea. Angles between that would be a angle bisector theorem, right, Gayatri? Okay, see, guys, everybody knows that if there is an angle bisector, correct? Can I say the ratio of S1P by S2P will be same as ratio of S2N by S1N? Okay, let's use this our angle bisector theorem. Why to go into too much of angles? Okay, if this is proved, then means this line will automatically bisect this angle. Okay. Reverse of angle bisector theorem, you can say so. Now, now let us talk about, first of all, the equation of a normal drawn at x1, y1. Let's say our P point is x1, y1. What is the equation of the normal that we have learned? I hope everybody remembers the equation of the normal drawn to a point x1, y1. Hope you are practicing all the DPPs sent to you. Hmm? Okay. So uh, for getting N1, uh, sorry, for getting N, you put your Y as zero, right? So when you put your Y as zero, your X becomes A square minus B square X1 by A square. Okay. For Y equal to zero. So that means your N coordinate is this. A square minus B square X1 by A square comma zero. Correct. Is it fine? Then what do you do next? So basically you have been, you have found out CN. 
ओके सो सी एन लेंथ इज नॉन ओन टू यू अच्छा वन अनदर थिंग दैट यू वुड ऑल रिकॉल हेयर दैट ए स्क्वायर माइनस बी स्क्वायर इज ए स्क्वायर ई स्क्वायर करेक्ट वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन इट इन आवर प्रीवियस डिस्कशन व्हेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द लेंथ ऑफ द फोकल कॉर्ड करेक्ट सो कैन आई से दिस इज दिस इज ए स्क्वायर ई स्क्वायर एक्स वन बाय ए स्क्वायर दैट इज नथिंग बट ई स्क्वायर एक्स वन ये सर So this length is e square x one. Yes. So now finding finding s n one will be very easy, or s one n will be very easy. S one n will be what? A e. This is A E minus C N. Am I right? That's nothing but E times A minus E X one. Similarly, S two N will be A E. This is your A E plus E square X one, which is A. Sorry, A times. Sorry, E times. A plus e x one, correct. And we also know s one p. S one p is a minus e x one, and s two p is a plus e x one, correct. Now you can clearly see from here that if I do s one p by s two p, I'll get a minus e x one by a plus e x one, and the same result is obtained when you do. So you multiply with e on both numerator and denominator. So if you multiply a e e on both numerator and denominator of this term, you will end up getting this. And this coincidentally is your s one n and s two n because you have just figured it out over here and here. So this property is holding true. That is your angle bisector theorem. Okay, holds here. Hey yo, what happened? Yeah. all sir okay that means that means this normal that you have drawn at p bisects this angle now this is a very interesting property which basically is related to reflection that means if a ray of light comes from one of the foci after hitting the elliptical surface it will basically converge or pass through the other focus and vice versa okay so if if i if a ray of light starts from s1 after hitting the elliptical surface it will pass through s2 okay so this is a property which comes out the reflection property comes out from the fact that the normal bisects the focal distances okay similarly tangent will bisect the external angle over here you can easily prove that as well is this fine so last 10 minutes of our class i will take questions i will take one or two questions and then we will close this topic can i move on read the question the question says a ray emanating from 0 comma 6 is incident on the ellipse at point p with ordinate s okay after reflection the ray cuts the y axis at b find the length 
PB. What is P here? Oh, at the point P. Okay, okay. So P is sitting over here. Sorry, I did not. Okay, get the y-axis at B. Find the length PB. And give me a response on the chat box. Most of the concepts in hyperbola will be a tweaked version of ellipse. Okay, so hyperbola can be done very quickly. So hyperbola, I think, should not take more than two classes. Two classes for pair of straight lines and maybe two classes for... So maybe six more classes we'll have on Sundays. I think the ordinate that they have given is five. It is not S. Ordinate is five. Without that, you'll not be able to solve it. Because it could be so many other points. So that five, they have written it as an S by mistake. Yes, is it taking so much time? See, first of all, let us try to analyze this ellipse. Uh, I think four into 64 this will be 64 and this will be 100 okay so this is x square by 8 square y square by 10 square is equal to 1 so basically it's a vertical ellipse
<clears throat> okay. It's a vertical standard case of an ellipse. Oh, okay. Aditya has given one response. Okay. This is a zero comma 10. This is zero comma minus 10. Eight comma zero minus eight comma zero. Fine. What is the eccentricity of this ellipse? Eccentricity will be one minus a square by b square because it's a vertical case. So a square is 64 by 100. So that's going to give me 0.6. Okay, so 0 comma b e, 0 comma b e is 0 comma 6. And they're also talking about 0 comma 6. Oh, so this happens to be one of the foci. It's one of the foci. So basically, it's saying that uh, ray is emanating from one of the foci. So that's a good point for us because if it emanates from one of the foci, then after hitting the uh, you can say the elliptical mirror after hitting the elliptical mirror, it will definitely pass through the other foci. Okay. So at least the point B is known to me. Why? Because B will be another foci, which is zero comma minus six. Okay. But the point where it is hitting the elliptical mirror, that is something comma five. The ordinate is five. That is what the question setter is giving us. The ordinate is five. I don't know about the abscissa, maybe abscissa, I can figure it out from the equation itself. So in this equation, if you put your uh, y as a five, let's check what happens to. So this is x square by 64 is equal to one fourth. So this is three fourth. So x square is 48. So it's root 48. So you can take it as four root three. Okay. It could be other way around also. It could like hit here also. Same ordinate will be applicable. Okay, so minus will be there, but distance will not change because these two triangles will be congruent. Okay. So uh, you know P, you know your B. So what is there? Find out the distance between them. That's all the question demands. So four root three square, 15 square under root. Oh, sorry, not 15 square, my bad. Uh, 11 square, 11 square. Okay, so this is 48, 121, which is 169. Under root 169 is known to be 13. Option number D is correct. Okay, so one last question we'll take up. Oh, uh, you have a test also to take, right? So guys, uh, we'll stop here. <laughs> I don't want to extend your time. You have a half an hour break to for your breakfast and all. So there will be a test sent to you. Please follow all the steps, okay? Don't skip any step and then say, sir, this, it is not opening for me and all those stuff, okay? Don't give those kind of, you have already taken so many tests. If at all you are stuck, go to your, uh, class 11th, J, sorry, class 12th, J main folder, 12, 9, 2021 test will be there that you have to take. But anyways, if you follow the link one by one, starting from the first to the last. Okay. So execute every step, which has been given in the uh, instructions, you will definitely reach the test. So no need to, you know, uh, panic, don't jump any step. Fine. So all the best. 10 o'clock, you can uh, take the JE main test. Neat people also, same. All right. Thank you, class. Bye-bye. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.